the administration's credit, I think they did a brilliant job so far on Libya. I mean, I think they, they waited and made the international community express the demand. Uh, and that gives lie to the notion that America's around trying to do globalization at the barrel of a gun. Because America gets sucked in as a midwife to these situations. Look, everywhere the military's gone, U.S. military's gone in a big way, you will find more states left than when they arrived. Okay? So we're midwifing this process because we feel a responsibility and we do never again. We bring up Hitler analogies and all this other stuff. But the answer is, if you look at the backside, it's always the natural integrators of the age. So who's going into Libya? Turks, Egyptians, I hope. Chinese, I hope the Indians show up. Italians, obviously, in those kinds of situations. But we're never the ones who are going to do the economic integration. So as much as possible, you've got to take it as a holistic process, encourage the backside players to get involved, however small, in the front side. Or if you can't get them involved for political reasons, then you're very cool with the transition. The opposite of what the Bush administration did with Iraq, which was, if you're not tough enough to show up for the war, forget about the contracts. Look how well that worked out. 95% of our casualties in the post-war, allegedly. Mission accomplished. So I mean, we could have turned it over to the Chinese in Iraq right from the beginning. Because they were going to get it anyway. Iranians too, Turks too. Who's going to change more in that interaction? Iran or Iraq? I would argue Iran over time. Okay? So I'm always a believer in sucking people in, just like Kissinger did with the Chinese and the Russians with Dayton. You will suffer setbacks. You will suffer disrespect and blowback. But who wins out in the end? Kissinger was right. Russia disappeared 16 years later. China opened up to the world. So who won that equation? Did we suffer the 70s? Yeah. Did we suffer Vietnam in the way we didn't want it to end? Absolutely. So, you know, I say make amends with the reality that you're dealing with. Understand your partners going forward are not Europe and Japan. Stop looking to them. Stop asking for their advice. Start working with the people who are doing the real integration. And then as much as possible, make that conversation around the locals and let them steer things. Because they've been doing economics in these situations for a long time. What we're talking about is just shifting them from sustenance to abundance. And in that process, everything will be changed, mostly because women will get liberated and get money, and that'll piss off men, and that creates violence everywhere throughout history. <laughs> and it also will piss off the religious elite because their religions were formed in a time of sustenance, and so the rules are based on survival. When you have abundance, then you can have gays and unwed marriage and all sorts of stuff, and then, ooh, cat's out of the bag, and everybody goes crazy. And then it turns into, you know, married with children or something. So, I say accept the fact that you're going to get tumult. Deal with the natural integrators of the age. I've given you tons of signals as to who they are, hint, hint. Uh, and stop simultaneously trying to contain China's rise. I mean, I, I don't know why we feel this need to do both things. We're going to contain China, keep it out of the world, and we're going to fix the world all by ourselves while the Chinese loan us tons of money. Okay, and we run out of bodies. Okay, and we're going to do it with our good friends who always show up in dozens, <laughs> willing to, you know, target practice. And it's just not realistic. We should go with people. I said this in a congressional testimony, and I remember everybody's jaws dropping. I said, I want allies who have lots of babies, want to go places and kill people. That's an ally. Defend economic interests. I'm looking at Europe. It's not there, by and large. We can go as far as the Libya kind of thing, and I, I really salute France and the UK for it, but I mean, that's seven million people living along the coast. There's going to be more violence in Africa and other places. They're going to need more efforts. The more we show up en masse, not just the Americans, but the guys everybody know are going to be the back enders, guys are going to make the economics happen, and you all show up en masse, and you know what? The violence tends to subside. Because everybody goes, you know what, I think I'm going to make money. I think I'm going to be protected enough in this situation. I got too much opportunity to waste it. If you keep the Chinese at bay and we come in and make it a Western thing, then it becomes the anti-imperialism, keep the Westerners out, you get the usual dynamic, and then we get frustrated and we leave. Chinese show up eventually anyway. I mean, the dynamics are all there, obvious for us to see. We just got to break out of our model of how we view the world in terms of who can be our friends, who got to be our enemies. And what's realistic about talking about helping these uh, developing situations get through the violence 
and minimizing as much as possible so that we all get the benefit which we really seek, which is access to a trillion dollars in consumer spending in Africa right now, which means they got almost as much consumer spending as uh, India or as Brazil, which is, they're big markets.